Story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain an adventure, comedy, and drama film called Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On their way back home, Dodge and his wife Linda listen to a radio broadcast informing everyone that the last ditch effort to save humankind has failed. Unfortunately, the 70 mile wide asteroid called Matilda is set to collide with Earth in exactly three weeks. Despite the tragic news, Dodge tries to remain calm and just points out that they missed their exit. Because of this, Linda looks at Dodge in disbelief before running away without a single word, leaving him for good. With 21 days left until the asteroid hits, Dodge's life continues without a single blip in his routine because people react differently to tragedy. Some people even started offering assassination services for those who don't want to wait for the end of the world. While he's at the gym, Dodge watches a news update that cell services are dead while power and water are soon to be shut off as well. Nonetheless, Dodge still drives back to work despite traffic becoming worse than usual. At work, Dodge, who's an insurance salesman, attends a meeting where their company is just giving away upper management executive positions. Dodge and his co-workers all react differently to the situation, but it's obvious that they all feel hopeless. When he gets back home to his apartment complex, Dodge checks his mailbox but sees it empty. Then, when he goes to his unit, he hears someone vacuuming inside. Dodge immediately assumes it's Linda, but it's just their weekly cleaner, Elsa. She greets him with a smile, so he asks her to stay to watch TV, but she politely refuses. Because of the current state of the world, Dodge tells Elsa not to come back next week, but she doesn't react well to the firing, so Dodge takes it back thinking that Elsa might be oblivious to the asteroid situation, or she just doesn't want to think about it. Elsa then leaves but tells him that she'll be back next week. After being left alone, Dodge watches more updates and sees that airlines are no longer in service, and the final flight has taken off. The next day, Dodge goes to work with spider bites on his face. Then, a man jumps to his death and lands on Dodge's car, leaving him terrified. With 14 days left, Dodge goes to a party thrown by his friend Warren and his wife Diane. When Diane greets him at the door, she immediately comments about Linda, noting how she never looked happy with him. Unfortunately, that's something that Dodge never noticed. Because Dodge is now single, Diane plans to set him up with her friend, but he isn't too fond of the idea. On the other hand, Warren just offers him a highly exclusive cigar, which he accepts. Diane tells her husband that Dodge needs to meet somebody or else he'll die alone, but Warren disagrees, saying that Dodge isn't going to die alone because he's going to die with a rest of the world. Still, Diane introduces him to Karen, who is dressed to the nines because she wants to wear the clothes she hasn't worn yet. During dinner, everyone shares their plans for their remaining days, and Karen expresses how much she likes Dodge. Later that night, the party grows wilder to the point that Warren even urges the kids to drink alcohol. On the other hand, Karen is still trying to get with Dodge, who's ignoring her advances. Instead, he talks to another friend, Roach who tells him about all his escapades with different women since the announcement of the end of the world. He even asks Dodge to have fun with him and Karen, but Dodge isn't into that kind of thing. Then, when his friends start doing hard drugs, Dodge chooses to hide in the bathroom. Moments later, Diane comes to check up on Dodge. Then, much to Dodge's surprise, Diane starts to kiss him, so he quickly pushes her away, pointing out that she's married to his friend. However, Diane disagrees, saying that nobody belongs to anyone anymore. Dodge ends up going home early to reminisce about his old life. He looks at a picture of him and his high school sweetheart, Olivia and starts to play the harmonica. Then, suddenly, he sees a woman crying by the fire escape. When Dodge checks up on her, she immediately starts bawling in his arms despite not knowing him. As it turns out, the woman, Penny, is Dodge's downstairs neighbor. Aside from recently breaking up with her boyfriend, she also missed her flight and now has no means of getting back home. Dodge invites her in, so they introduce themselves to each other. After that, Penny takes a sip of Dodge's cough syrup with codeine and vodka, then offers him some weed, but he declines. Penny then tells him that the substance helps with her bad sleeping routine due to her hypersomnia, noting that she can sleep through the apocalypse. That night, Penny falls asleep on Dodge's couch. Sure enough, she doesn't wake up even when the television is playing loudly and Elsa is vacuuming in front of her. Dodge even pinches her nose, but Penny doesn't move an inch. 
bridge. Moments later, Penny wakes up, so Dodge walks her downstairs. As they arrive at Penny's place, she hands him his lost letters that mistakenly got put in her mailbox, noting that she kept them for years. Penny also asks Dodge about Linda, thinking that she's his roommate. She says she seemed so happy with her boyfriend, revealing that she used to bring a guy over to their apartment without Dodge's knowledge. Because of this revelation, Dodge goes back to his apartment and angrily disposes of Linda's belongings. He then goes to a park to drown his sorrows with a bottle of window cleaner. But despite the attempt to take his life, Dodge still wakes up the next day, only to find an abandoned dog tied to his foot and a paper that just says sorry. Going back home, he notices mayhem breaking out in the streets but ignores it. Moments later, while Dodge is watching the news about a massive riot, he reads the lost mail that Penny gave back to him and sees a confession letter from Olivia dated months ago. Then suddenly, a brick is thrown through his window from the riot outside. He tries to go out but hears a commotion in the hallway, so he leaves through the fire escape instead. He brings along Sorry the dog and heads down to Penny's apartment. There, Dodge encounters Owen. Penny's ex-boyfriend who immediately assumes that he's sleeping with Penny. A bit annoyed, Dodge ignores him to wake up Penny and warn her about the riots, but Owen is trying to get in his way. Dodge also tells him to move quickly and leave, but Penny is adamant about bringing a few of her music records with her. Penny offers to drive as they try to escape the current disorder, but they find trouble locating her car. Some people then start firing their guns, so Owen uses Penny as a human shield to protect himself. When they get to her vehicle, Penny struggles driving away because she's stuck in a parallel parking space. Owen goes out to assist her, but he starts berating Penny for not doing it properly. Dodge, who just wants to leave, tells Penny that he knows someone with a plane. He says he can take Penny to her family if she manages to get him out of there, so Penny just recklessly drives away without Owen. They run out of gas the next day, so they end up walking down the road. Because of their current situation, tensions rise, and they start arguing. Dodge says Penny ruined his life, blaming her for not getting Olivia's letter in time. Penny starts feeling guilty because of that, so she promises to help him find his lost love. She then hails an oncoming vehicle and asks the driver, Glenn, to take them to Somerset, and the kind man gives them a lift. On the road, Penny makes Glenn share his life story, so he confesses that he was planning on killing himself after learning about the end of the world. However, he mentions that doing that won't get him into heaven. Then, while Glenn is talking, Dodge notices that he has shovels at the back of his truck, which makes him suspicious. Moments later, Glenn pulls over to take a leak and invites Dodge to come with him, but he refuses. Then, Penny takes Sorry out for a walk when Glenn comes back. Once Penny is gone, Glenn tells Dodge to kill him quickly, thinking he's the hitman he hired. Dodge is confused at first, but they manage to resolve the misunderstanding. Unfortunately, it isn't long before the real assassin shoots Glenn in the neck and speeds off. When Penny comes back, they bury him using the shovels in the vehicle. They then decide to use Glenn's truck, but since they accidentally buried the keys with him, they have to dig him up again. As Dodge and Penny continue driving and getting to know each other, they come across a restaurant called Frenzies. They then meet Darcy and Katie, the overly friendly servers. As they order, Penny lies that it's Dodge's birthday, so the restaurant crew gives him a little surprise and a couple of kisses. However, when things start getting crazy, they escape the restaurant. Afterward, the two end up sharing a passionate moment in the truck. However, Dodge regrets it later because of their age difference, not wanting to seem like he's taking advantage of Penny. He apologizes but Penny brushes it off, telling him it was bound to happen. As they drive, a cop suddenly pulls them over for speeding. At the same time, Dodge and Penny learn that Glenn's vehicle has a broken taillight and an expired plate number. Given the current state of the world, Penny tries to plead with the officer Wally to let them go, but he refuses, so they find themselves getting locked up. In their separate cells, Penny starts crying out of guilt because she feels like she ruined Dodge's life as much as she ruined her own. So Dodge tries to comfort her through the bars and starts talking about his own life to make her feel better. A little while later, one of the police officers releases them and apologizes for Wally's behavior. He also mentions that their truck got impounded, so he offers them a ride. But because their destination is too far, Penny asks to be taken to Camden, where Speck, a military man with a bomb shelter, lives. 
He also happens to be Penny's ex-boyfriend, and he is still in love with her. Speck then welcomes them to his titanium-walled basement and lets Penny speak to her family using a satellite phone. After that, Speck tells Dodge that there's no room for him in their shelter, but only for Penny. However, Penny doesn't plan to stay. Instead, she asks to borrow a car so she could take Dodge to Olivia. Together, they leave, but Speck tells Penny to return with the car. Eventually, they arrive at Olivia's place, but there isn't anyone home. So instead, they just break into the house and try to make themselves feel comfortable. Then, when Dodge wakes up from a nap later, he sees Penny preparing dinner. They share a peaceful moment to talk about mundane things next to the fireplace. And as Penny talks about the things she likes, Dodge just listens fondly. Moments later, Penny goes to the kitchen and finds Olivia's letter to her parents with a return address. She then shows it to Dodge and says they'll go there the next day. However, when they get to the address, Dodge doesn't knock or check inside despite thinking that Olivia is home. Instead, he just leaves her a letter. Confused, Penny keeps asking him about it, but he brushes her off. Dodge realizes that he's developed feelings for Penny, but doesn't want to tell her because she needs to get back to her family. Then, in the middle of their conversation, Dodge turns to look at Penny, so he almost hits some people. As Penny and Dodge follow the couples and families, they realize that they're lining up at the beach to get baptized. Then, while watching those people, they confirm their blooming love for each other as they kiss, not even finding the need to put it into words. They also stay at the beach, joining the others as they spend what little time they have left with their loved ones. Penny and Dodge continue their journey soon, and they eventually arrive in Somerset. There, Dodge introduces Penny to Frank the guy he knows who has a plane. As it turns out, Frank is Dodge's father, whom he hasn't seen in more than 20 years. Because of their family problems, Dodge and Frank have some unspoken tension between them. However, they try to move past such issues because the world is ending in less than two weeks. They spend a final lovely evening together, making up for lost time. Then, when Penny finally falls asleep, Dodge carefully carries her to Frank's plane without even saying goodbye. But before leaving, Dodge confesses to a sleeping Penny that she's the love of his life. As Frank takes Penny back to England, Dodge returns home and finds a note from Karen, who's looking for him. He also finds Elsa cleaning his apartment, so he angrily tells her to leave and be with her family. However, Dodge takes back what he said when he sees how confused Elsa is, and she says she'll see him next week before leaving. Unfortunately, there is no more next week. As Dodge watches the final TV broadcast, the anchorman announces that the asteroid is arriving in exactly 16 hours. Because of that, Dodge goes down to Penny's apartment to spend his remaining hours there. He then starts listening to Penny's music records before lying down on the floor, waiting for the world's end. However, a few moments later, the power suddenly goes out. Sorry starts bothering Dodge, so he stands up to see what he wants. Then, he sees that Penny has returned for him, upset that he let her leave. As they reunite, Penny tells Dodge that she made Frank turn around when she woke up. They then lie down together, spending their final moments as Penny makes Dodge swear not to let her fall asleep. She also tells Dodge that she just wants to be with him, and of course, he feels the same way. To distract Penny, Dodge makes her talk about her childhood as explosions sound in the distance. Penny then cries in fear, but Dodge remains calm and tells her how madly in love he is with her. Dodge is just glad that he got to know Penny, and as they stare into each other's eyes, the asteroid finally hits. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.